Chris. Hello. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chris. My day job is a sysadmin, not very arty, I suppose. Um, what do I do? I do? I do a lot of cybercrime research. I'm an uh, expert in darknet markets, uh, credit card fraud, uh, online drug trade. And um, I incre I'm, I'm also involved in futurist politics in var various areas. And I've got, I'm a member of the UK Pirate Party, which is a small organisation these days. We're a bit more of a lobbyist organisation than a political party so, uh, of late. Um, obviously, we campaign for copyright reform, digital rights, and no, uh, num numerous areas. And obviously, we think um, this concept of ownership as uh, copyright by default, the idea that you have to ask permission for everything, is holding back innovation, is holding back, uh, holding back culture, is a mechanism for, for censorship and is a bad thing in, in broad terms. And very interested in uh, you know, what you're saying about um, is you know, he's copying the future or, or, or becoming a normalized thing in, in, in the arts preservation, but in, in everything, obviously, with the, with, the, with the internet. And yeah, just very, very interested to see where this will go, really. Chris, first. Um, in relation to how, how, perhaps speaking mostly in terms of your work with the Pirate Party, how do you how do you feel that the the, the, the copyright patent law um, prevents dissemination? Sure. Well, if you the, the internet is a copying machine. Um, it is not. There, if people talk about the transfer of information. They talk about sending an email. They talk about downloading, uploading. But fundamentally, it's copying in every direction. It is fundamental what the, the internet is based on and what 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 the underlying technology works. And um, this has obviously been very disrupted in many, many fields. Um, obviously, the one which most people know is just people downloading films and TV shows, etc. But everything from um, computing software to any, any information, suddenly this copying machine is perceived as out of control by many, many, many people and not, not, no longer a force for good. And this wouldn't be, wouldn't be a problem, per se, if it wasn't for the extensive lobbying by, by people um, so, you know, in the film industry and so on and so forth to turn um, copyright into a weapon, a weapon of, of, weapon of censorship, a weapon of, of blocking, a weapon of monitoring, a weapon of, of control. And this is really, and it, and it, it's scary how, how, how powerful it's got, this, how it's got. In order to achieve quite, I would, you know, I'm sure we'd agree, quite laudable aims of ensuring that people are, are compensated un, under fair, fair frameworks for, for their work. But it's turned into a, a vehicle for suing people, monetizing, um, monetizing what people are doing. And it, it, it is out, I would argue it's out, it's out, it's out of control. And what, you know, I'm sure you can argue that these are quite reasonable, reasonable uh, systems for, with, with laudable ethical goals. But um, <laughs> may, maybe, or maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be extreme to judge. But um, there's going to be a yeah, fist fight later. You know, we, we, live, we live in this world where literally we, we, have, we, have, we have up to seven billion people connected to this giant copying machine. And we have a system which light tries to license monetize this. And inevitably, we have a conflict there. So I think it's time to have a good, good look at this and think, and think about, well, what does this mean for ownership? What, did, what does this mean for, um, you know, for, for these, these frameworks? And I, I think it's, mm. it's time to change them. I mean, you, me you remember when uh, we had Napster and people download, so download uh, everything off the internet for free and then everyone stopped making music and there's no more music anymore? <laughs> yeah, well, that's not the case, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is it? So we have, um, there's, we have more music available to us than any time in, in yeah. history, be it uh, off frequently through legal, legal channels like Spotify or through Netflix, etc. We can watch quality content when we want. We pay for it. We want to pay for it. You know, most people will say, will say oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to download that. Oh, isn't it great? I can get this from Netflix. I can get this from Spotify. Listen to my playlist, etc. We're sharing our music. We're, we're uh, paying for our music. We are supporting the artists we love. And this, you know, this is a much broader variety of artists now. You know, um, I'm sure we, you know, have, I'm sure you'll have friends here who listen to those bands that you know you haven't heard of because you're not cool enough, right? That 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 <laughs> <laughs> that that that's um, that's a, something that's a product of, of the world we live uh, we live in today with with choice and people making music primarily because they love it, and many of them do get compensated, but many of them don't. The centralized models whereby you know you approach a label, etc., and you get signed, and then that's what goes out in HMV and that's what's in the top ten. That's what the kids listen to these days. That's gone, you know. The, the, these um, the, the, exactly yeah. these, these are gone. And um, this is not this is not due to the protection interests protectionist interests are working. It's used to them failing and adapting. And that that's actually that's a really good thing. 
But of course, they said every time, every time, no one produced anything. What about the artists, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, and it's, it's, it's nonsense. Yeah, I, I mean, we we are at a, a cusp of um, I'll be honest, a going to be a media crisis over over 3D printing. Everything from printing guns to people downloading patented designs, people printing, people can print their own T-shirts at home, and people going to say home T-shirt printing is killing Primark or something, you know, and, and it will, and it'll be great. It'll be, like, it'll, it'll, be the, it'll be the it'll be the low end go, goes first, and these T-shirts will be cheap and they'll be tacky, and they'll work, last about ten washes and you throw them away, and they'll still be popular and still be more still be better than Primark. Um, for, for, for example, but then this, you know, this, we, we only, we're not far away from this, but then will people step in and will they subsidize them and say, no, the, the uh, sweatshop workers in India will lose their jobs for a Primark and therefore we must subsidize them and ban 3D printers from doing this and we must protect our economy? Or will we accept that we're living in a world of incredible technological change and we need to adapt and anticipate take this right now? and not uh, necessarily protect our economies and look at the innovation this can, this can, can lead to. I mean, I, I, I'm obviously, a, I, advocate, I advocate the latter here, but um, that's not usually how the government works. It's usually very reactive and protective and, you know, in terms of what the lobbyists and interests say, not in what's, you know, most innovative.